everybody, welcome back, unboxing time. I know Mary's not here, we've explained, I'll explain again. Today I'm here to open up my September, or October, September? It tells you in the title, 2020 Vinyl. Although, I don't know why it's not in the standard pink vinyl box, it says vinyl everywhere, but they may have just run out, maybe it's pandemic related, I don't know. But as you know, uh, Mary and I, we had too many unboxings and like, I mean, I'm just now releasing like the August vinyl unboxing in October or something like that, maybe even in July and October, whatever it is, I'm so far behind. We had to split this up into multiple days. And since she's never really that into the music I'm getting and listening to, this is one we thought I would just do myself, which is kind of fine for me. I'll move through it a little bit quicker to get to the reviews and um, you know, I get to open this. I don't have to wait for the timing to be right for both of us to sit down and do it. So that's a nice little bonus as well. I'm sorry I keep looking off to the side. It's new studio, new setup, trying to figure it out. I mean, we're on location, right? This is a cool record store. Anyways, if you want to check out vinyl, I have a link in the description below. And you can choose, like, I think you can do one record, but I know you can do three records. I think it cost me $39 a month, which is a stellar deal for what I've been getting. Um, and they can they can connect to your Spotify and your Discogs, so they can use Spotify to see what you're liking and what you're listening to. They can use your Discogs to see what you have, so they don't send you duplicates. Although I will notice that my Discogs keeps disconnecting every month, and I have to go reauthorize it. So. I don't know what's going on with that. I always choose curated, but they do have like three choices every month of a record. And then if you choose one of those records, which you can listen to in advance digitally, they will find a couple records to match with that, which is pretty cool. But I like curated because, you know, I just, I, they've been doing really great. I mean, they found me my new favorite band a while back. So terribly excited about that. Um, now, the last box, it was okay. It was a different vibe than I was expecting. I was in the mood for a high energy rock and roll vibe and they finally gave me more of a chill vibe and it's pretty good. But you know, I mean, it's not gonna be perfect for everybody, but I am so lost in the world of modern music that I wanna stay connected to all these incredible indie bands and stuff that I may not ever really know about or soundtracks I just haven't grabbed. So that's why I like doing this. It's nice and curated. It's pretty awesome. But we're gonna take a look at this and then I'm gonna show it to you a little bit while we look at it. And then I'll cut to me actually doing some in-depth reviews and uh, you'll get a really good look at all the album art, the liner notes and all that kind of stuff as well. So we're gonna tear into this and try to get in here blind and take a quick look at what three records we get. Ah, yeah. Sweet. All right. So here we go. There's, is there? But no, there's three records in here. I had to kind of look a little bit. I have almost like a newsletter or something. No, it's just a sheet of paper. They usually send some kind of cool something. LT, everything is fine, vinyl. I don't know if this is uh, something we've got in here or if this is an advertisement, but you can take a look at that here for just a second. And, um, you know, again, you'll get a better look. I'll make sure to show this if I'm not showing it to you now with a nice photograph so you can really take a look at it then uh, hopefully you can pause and see what you get there. I do have, we'll look at it in a minute, but a hand curated note. Uh, we'll see who my curator is this time. Most of them have done me very, very well. And I'm kind of excited to see what we get. But let's actually jump into the vinyl. And yes, we'll pull out my first record. And it is Refused. I don't know, this looks like some hardcore, which can be cool, cool in the right mood. Uh, first vinyl pressing in over a decade. Limited to 5,000 copies worldwide, pressed on high quality European vinyl. What's different from American vinyl? <laughs> um, oh, it's a shorty though. There's uh, one, two, three songs on side A. One, two, three, four songs on side B. It's fine, it makes reviewing it much easier. And, oh, Epitaph. All right, cool, it's an Epitaph, Epitaph Records release. This is from 2013, so this can be very interesting. I don't really know other than what I, like I said, it's probably some kind of hardcore or at least some nice punk rock. So I'm sure this is gonna be back to the high energy awesomeness that I like to check out. Uh, I guess we'll pop it open here and see what the vinyl looks like. If I can find a safe way in. I'm now standing up too, which is making things a little bit different, taking a little bit more getting used to in terms of doing these unboxings. So <laughs> bear with me here. Almost got it open. Almost got it open. There we go, we got the corner started. All right, tearing along the seam, trying not to bend things too bad. And get that out the way. No digital card, we do have a lyric sheet. Again, you'll get a good look at that in the recording. Um, we've got some plastic in there. And it is just a standard uh, black vinyl. It's fine, it feels, it feels pretty thick though. I don't think it's 180, but it feels like it could be 180. 
All right, so that's a good start. Let's see what the next record is. And we get Safer Odd. Am I saying that right? Oh, Lilith. Safer Off. Lilith. I think I've heard of them. Is that kind of like a slightly metalish punk rock? All right, yeah, it's a it's a it's a duo of awesome looking ladies here. First song on there is Vacation. Is it the uh, the is it like a cover of Vacation? That was awful singing. For the cowards in the back who didn't think it was about them is one of the songs. Coward reprise. Okay. And uh, Disposable America is one of the labels. Take This to Heart is one of the labels. And again, you will get a much better look at this as we do the reviews. I like that cover art. I like that art style. I don't know who did that, but uh, I'm digging that artist's work. I, I would That's somebody who I would like to check out more of their work. Maybe they actually have the artist listed in here. I don't know. All right, let's see what we get. If it's just uh, standard vinyl, they do know I like colored vinyl and they often send me colored vinyl. It doesn't guarantee they're gonna do it every time. Also, I did spend a lot of time curating what I like and what I don't, listing a ton of bands that I'm into, a uh, few bands I'm not, all that kind of stuff. So that's why they've done a really good job so far for me in terms of picking great stuff almost every time out. So that's also something to keep in mind if you're gonna subscribe. The more work you put into it, the better you're going to, you know, the more you're going to get out of it. So, oh, we do have a digital download card in there. All right, very, very cool. We do have a, a lyric sheet. I just wanna check that first song. No, it looks like Vacation might be their own song. That's cool, that's cool. And it is on color vinyl. Ooh, that's pretty. We got kind of almost a Valentine's pink and red splatter. Again, you'll get a much nicer look at that in the, uh, in the review section. Very cool. I'm anxious to check that one out too. I'm anxious to start reading the curated letter or the letter, the handwritten letter, because it gives me a better idea of what I'm in for and why they chose what they chose. Although it didn't look like they wrote a lot. We might have something special here or something very cool because it has its own uh, slip case around the shrink wrapped record. So for our final record, oh, it was heavy and thick too. What is this one? Forget cassettes, instruments of action. I know nothing about this, but it looks interesting. Not a lot of songs on it, about eight, nine songs. That's fine. 2017 YK Records. 2003 Theory 8 Records. All right, all right. When it comes out, it's, oh, oh, geez. Oh, there's a seven inch in there as well. Okay, cool. So it is, uh, it is okay, the record's already out. So this is, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's used or just specialty that they do it like that. It's fine, as long as it's in great shape, I'm cool with that. Again, 39 bucks for three vinyl records is pretty incredibly cheap especially with how great some of these things are. So there's that. Again, this definitely looks like we're going back to some high energy punk rock or something at least. You know, some kind of nice rock and roll. That looks really, really cool. See what the main vinyl is, if there's any color to it. I think it's just, no, oh, yo. Oh. I don't know how well this is gonna show up right now. It's kind of a, it's slightly greenish clear. So that's pretty cool. Again, the photos will show it off really nice. That's a beautiful color of vinyl. Uh-oh, my static is clinging. Oh, no, I see what's up. It's wanting to go on the wrong side of the thing here. You know, the, the glue part of the, or the folded part of the sleeve. It was trying to go down the glued side. And now the other side's trying to go down the glued side. There we go. And then we get a little seven inch too. So that's awesome. Of course, from the same band. I mean, it was in there. Just two songs. I've got an alt version of Like Tiny Swords and a live version of, what is that? Me Jane. So it's a slipcase, and also like the other thing, it looks like they did, no, the record is actually in, in the, the thing. It looks like we got black vinyl, yeah. I do love some good 45, some good seven inches, so that's very cool. I got a good feeling about this month. I know last month was good, just, you know, disappointing because of my expectations more than anything. And some of that stuff they sent me last month, I'll, I'll enjoy from time to time. To be honest, at this point, I've only listened to two out of three of them as I'm filming this, but by the time this comes out, we'll see how that differs. All right, so let's see if there's anything else in here. Nope. And then, you know, we had the L-Tree thing, which I guess is a, as a, as an ad or like a slip thing if you did the other uh, curated things. I don't know. But now we have our handwritten thing. And this is from Sam. I think Sam might have been one of the guys who's curated for me before. I know there was a Ryan, I know there was a Holly, and I think there was a Sam. Anyways, the letter reads, and it is handwritten. So you can kind of check that out there while I read it. Hey Eric, this month I'm sending you some off-kilter power pop from all-star Massachusetts's Lilith. Right on. Uh, serrated? Serrated? 
serrated, serenaded lyricism slicing through the buttery guitars. Perfect for any fan of the muffs. Okay, right on. That's the mood I'm in, too. Next, an album that could be considered definitively influential to underground hardcore punk from Sweden's Refused. I figured that would be hardcore, so I'll check that out. Time down with that. Finally, the re-release of one of Forget Cassette's best records. Doesn't tell me anything about it, but Sam looks like he knows what I'm into for sure. I'm wondering if Sam is the one that turned me on to a giant dog. If any of this even comes half as close to being as badass as a giant dog, I'm in for an absolute treat as I listen through these records. But now I'm going to read, I'm going to go listen to them and then I will tell you what I think right about here and then I'll be right back to wrap this up. So let's talk about the music. As usual, we're going to do these in the order of my least favorite to my favorite. So the first record is Refused, Everlasting. Hardcore can be very hit or miss for me. However, this record has what I prefer. Songs with some structure as well as passion. The riffs and productions totally hit for me. Reminiscent of Sepultura meets Minor Threat with a dash of System of a Down. Musically, at least. It's short but sweet. It feels like it has something to say. Musically, I also get shades of mid-odorous era guar in the vein of Ragnarok, and I love that. I also occasionally get vibes of Anthrax, or Scott Ian's guitar riffs at least, and I love that too. Overall, the record can be a little bit of the same thing all the way through, but it works here. Just pure energy, anger, and aggression working itself out, and it works beautifully. Even if I am not in the mood for this energy, it still gets me bouncing off the walls, and I dig the hell out of that. We Are Not A Part Of The Problem being a major standout track for me, with a bridge that really brings the Sepultura vibes. Overall, a surprise for me for sure in the hardcore realm. A welcome surprise, <laughs> to quote Palpatine. If I'm in a hardcore punk mood, this is what I want. A welcome addition to my collection that will be listened to time and again. I can't say I would actively go out and buy more of their music based on my personal tastes, but I would be more than happy if more of their work ends up in my future collection. Forget Cassettes, Instruments of Action. This starts off very timid with a ton of possibilities. The first track, German Girls, was super depressing, setting the tone for this record. That can work when you're in the right mood for it, but as I write this review, I'm not in that mood. <laughs> Track two, Asismus, Asimus, Achimus, Achismus, I don't know, immediately shows some anger and aggression coming out, and I dig it. Gives me vibes of artsy hardcore. Would have preferred to start with this track. It goes on a bit too long, but I dig its vibe of depression, anger, confusion, and oneself and overall anxiety. Mr. Rhythm and Blues contains the growing, evolving vibe of increasing anger, awareness, and confidence that has been cultivated musically throughout thus far. These tracks are more like therapy sessions for the writer, more than being structured songs. I'm not sure that I'm a huge fan of that. I do really like the production on this record, however. There are some sonic moments here and there that I think are phenomenal. They suffer a bit, for me, of that Jack White curse of having great riffs that go on much longer than they need to. I'm finding it hard to get into the emotionally manic element of the songwriting, though, personally. Side B brings me back to a similar energy as the beginning of the record, but builds into something more interesting and powerful. Like Tiny Swords is possibly my favorite track here, and it's full of energy and emotion. Talking Big is an instrumental that I wish was longer. It's painfully short. The record kind of has an ending. As for the included 7-inch, the alt version of Like Tiny Swords works much better for me, even though I love the original. I love the vibe at the beginning of Me Jane for Side B. Me Jane might be my favorite song. No, it is my favorite song of this collection. It belongs on a soundtrack like the first Crow film or maybe even its sequel. It's pretty great. Ultimately, I may enjoy this when I'm in more of the melancholy mood, which is more rare at my age than it was in my youth. I am happy to have this and I will give it future listens when I'm in the perfect mood for it. Lilith, Safer Off. It starts off with a big 90s alternative vibe and I dig it. 
I like the soft harmonies that give me a tiny bit of Tegan and Sarah feel. It does suffer a little from each song sounding a bit too much the same. However, I think that comes more from the production choices than the songwriting. At least in the first two songs, it seems to be lacking any dynamics in the volume, making it feel a bit more flat in its energy. Occasionally, the vocals give me a bit of a Letters to Cleo vibe that I dig. There is some clever guitar work and vocal harmonies going on here, but it's all just kind of mushed together in the mix and nothing ever really gets highlighted or has a chance to stand out and shine. I wonder what they sound like live. Coward is a standout, with a dynamic mix and great harmonies. I just feel like it needs a faster tempo. Garden is another good song, with a chill vibe, and when those drums come in, it is great. Colder has a pretty catchy, memorable vocal vibe to it. In Real Life pops out with a slightly different production, enough to stand out and have a cool vibe reminiscent of The Breeders. I love the riff on Decency. It also has the most catchy chorus of all of the album at this point. C-O-Y-F is definitely bringing that Letters to Cleo vibe. Fun rhythms in the chorus, and I love the energy that builds throughout this song. It feels like a proper ending song. Coward, Reprise, is a wonderful piece, but unnecessary here. Would have preferred to end on the last song. Overall, I'm happy to add this record to my collection, and I will enjoy rediscovering and re-examining it from time to time in the future. Plus, I'd like to hear the band live. Hopefully that was really, really cool. I got really good feelings about it. Um, obviously I filmed these long before the videos come out, but hopefully not as long as it used to be. Um, so I'm anxious to get a chance to check out these records and spend some time with them. And again, keep in mind with my reviews, it's all super subjective. If I didn't like something you love, don't take it personally, don't take it to heart. I probably don't like some stuff you love. You know, I mean, oh, I just said that. But you know what I mean, it, music is like different for every person and even the mood or the atmosphere or the timing you're listening to it can totally change your perspective. So I do try to listen to these a few times at different t different points before I sit down and write my thoughts. But you know, just, just keep that in mind. It's personal to everybody. Those are only my personal thoughts and I'm no critic by any means. I'm just sharing my feelings, which is what I do here. But how do you feel? Are you familiar with any of these bands? Do you dig them? Do you get vinyl? What are some of the great finds they found for you? Have they turned you on to an awesome band? Now that you're starting to see my musical tastes, you got any suggestions for me? I'd love to hear it. Go ahead and geek out with me in the comments below. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Other than that, you can give me that good old thumb of encouragement by clicking that thumbs up button if you want to. I do love to be encouraged. If you want some video game let's plays, food, vlogs, life stuff, movie reviews, and more, um, you can check out our Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you're going to get an extra video every single day. Great way to support the channel, great way to be part of our small Patreon peeps community and just kind of get to know more about our life and what's going on. We do a lot of fun stuff over there. You can find that by looking up the Eric Butts or using the links in the description below. But uh, I guess that's it. I'm going to get on out of here now so I can uh, go listen to some badass tunes, I got a feeling, and then I will see you all later.